Live the Goals Podcast, episode number 243. Live the Goals Podcast, your place for motivation, life lessons, and laughter. Don't settle for wandering through a mundane life. Instead, let us help you reach your goals and live a fulfilling life doing what you love. Our guests know what it's like to live with purpose and laugh along the way. Morning. If you're a stick in the mud, you definitely need to stick around. Loosen up your ties, kick off your high heels, and let's get to it with your host, Dale Richardson. All right, friends and family, welcome back to Live the Goals podcast. I got a special guest for you today. Today's guest is Kenneth Big Kenny Johnson. Kenny is a uh, radio personality. I'm not even used to calling them Kenneth Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Big Kenny is a radio personality, a writer, and one of Atlanta's brightest and most talented comedians. For almost 20 years, Big Kenny has crushed stages all across the world and is open for some of comedy's biggest stars. He's performed at what reads as really like the who's who of comedy venues. I mean, places like BT's Comic View, um, Comedy Central, Showtime at the Apollo, The Improv, and that's, I mean, that's just to name a few. So Big Kenny is also a primary player in Atlanta's own blacktop circus improv comedy troupe, and that's the nation's only improv comedy troupe comprised of professional black comedians. So Big Kenny, are you ready to help us set and reach goals that matter? Uh, yes, I am. And you know, you calling me Kenneth Johnson. I'm not, <laughs> used to, I'm not even used to hearing it outside of the courtroom. <laughs> right. When, when, you when you said Kenneth Johnson, I looked for my lawyer real quick. Like, should I answer this question? And then I realized that we just, this isn't the court video uplink. This is something I can relax, man. So yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm ready, man. Whatever it is. Yeah, your your, your liberty is not at stake right here. <laughs> oh, thank goodness for once. You know? Right, uh, Kenny. I gave him kind of your professional, just you know, kind of like the boilerplate bio of, and that doesn't even really get into the half of it. But I love for you to kind of share a little bit more, so we get a a better, well-rounded picture of who you are, man. Um, man, that was um very detailed. I am primarily a stand-up comedian, but. Uh, if you've ever followed me on social media, my handle is Stellar Talent of All Things Media because I do what I can to be uh, a seasoned, efficient, competent um, contributor yeah. to anything media. I've written for comedy magazines. I've directed in movies. I've acted. Uh, I do improv. I am an on-air radio personality. Uh, but my primary uh, love is stand up. We met in my stand up comedy class. So yeah. I teach and, and I try and do things like that. But primarily, I do stand up comedy and all of the things generally that um, I find myself involved in are related to comedy. But lately, I've started developing uh, content for television, the internet, and movies. And of all the stuff that I have, I've got two uh, dramatic uh, pieces that okay. are working on now. Yeah. So. All right. And, and, you know, I didn't want to mention that I'd met you um, as a student of your class because I, I didn't want people to think less of your teaching. <laughs> oh, really? Really? My, my, my teaching is horrible. So there's nothing that you could do that would ever tarnish my reputation because uh, the university that I used to teach at is now McDonald's, just to let you know how well we, how well we do in the yeah. teaching game. So. Man, um, so this this should be an easy thing for you, Ken. I always start my podcast interviews asking the people to just share something funny that happened to them recently. So um, I'd love for you to get the show started with just telling us something that's funny that happened because I, I, I just want people to always remember that, hey, you got to laugh through life, right? Good, bad, ugly. You, you got to make sure you're laughing through life sometimes. Um, it, it You know, now one of the things about comedy, man, is is what I see as funny. Uh -huh. I find the humor in some of everything. So some things uh, some, some, some people think are funny and then some people may, may think aren't funny. But uh, for me, uh, something that I thought was funny is I was once coming back into the country. And, you know, now we have a lot of this 
uh, immigration issue type thing. Right. And I get two customs. I get my little passport stamp and they ask me, can they speak to me in the private room? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I had gone out of uh, the country to Turkey and coming back in, they want to speak to me in a private room. And I was thinking, look, I know I'm ethnic, but what did this shit? I'm from here, really. Don't touch me, man. But uh, it was, they didn't want anything immigration related. Uh, they just wanted to pat me down for illegal narcotics. So, you know. D did you beat the charge? <laughs> uh, no, I actually didn't catch any charge, but it was funny when I finally did get into the airport. Everybody was screaming, let them in. <laughs> and I was like, I really appreciate it, guys. I didn't, you know, woo. Uh, if it hadn't been for you guys being here, I might still be sitting in customs. <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of the things about comedians is that things that other people might not find funny. You, I mean, you pull comedy out of some of everything. And um, before we go any further, I, I just really do want to say, I mean, you may, you might already know this, but friends and family, you don't. If, if this is your first time hearing about Big Kenny, um, he's, it, you are one of my favorite comedians, period. Like, I've been watching comedy oh, thanks, my whole man. life. And, and of the three comedians that you know, that is fantastic. <laughs> hey, man, to be in the top three or three, that's you're doing something. <laughs> I'll um, take it. I'll take it. And, 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 and so, you know, I, when I started the intro, I, you've been doing this for over almost two decades now, and you don't survive that long in, in a profession like comedy if you're not good at what you're doing. And, um, and I have watched friends and family. I, I, like some people are just hilarious, funny all the time. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're a great comedian, right? I mean, right. the people that I talk to that are friends and we out kicking it, they might be hilarious, but you put them on stage and it's a whole different world. Right. And to have seen um, Big Kenny work his magic on all different types of audiences, um, people where I don't, I'm not even quite sure why they came to the uh, comedy club because they seemed like they didn't want to laugh. And to be able to see other comedians get up there and not be able to turn the audience and then see Kenny get on stage and completely win them over. It is, it really is like watching art, right? It's like watching Michelangelo paint or, or whatever. So um, I just wanted to give you props right at the beginning of, of this man. And um, uh, you are you are too kind, sir. <laughs> and the, the check should be made out to who now? Live the Goals podcast. <laughs> I'll give you the address when we get off. <laughs> uh, but, Thank but, you, man. You are too kind. But uh, you, you are really cool <laughs> that. Uh, one of the things that surprised me when I first started doing comedy is that at the professional level, even as you're um, honing your skills in open mics and trying to um, establish yourself in this business, mm -hmm. you realize really quick that it's competitive to the point where it's almost like gladiator blood sport. Uh, it's you against not only your competition of peers and contemporaries, you against the audience. Because what's interesting to me is most audiences show up at comedy clubs trying not to laugh. <laughs> they come with, I, I, I bet he ain't gonna be funny to me. And yeah. and that is your a room full of these people, except for the two girls down front. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> they're laughing at everything, but everybody yeah. else is sort of uh, issuing a challenge. I want you to make me laugh and they have, already prepared in their minds what they're not going to laugh at, what you're not going to make them laugh about. Mm -hmm. And when you finally win them over, it, it, it's, a, it's an empowering thing. It really is. And wow. uh, I really appreciate all the kind things that you said, man, because it, it is very difficult to remain not only in the business, but relevant for 20 years. Yeah, and, and you picked the right word. Gladiators is a good word for it. I mean, it is battle every time you get on stage. Yeah. And I, so so let's talk, let's let's go back a little bit. I'd love to know, um, never asked you this before, how did you realize you wanted to be a comedian? Uh, actually, this is my childhood dream, Dale. Uh, uh, when I was in school, even before we could connect the career with the proper phraseology, uh, the teacher's going around the room, what do you want to be? Uh, one of my friends wanted to be a fire truck. And I'm sure <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he was leaning towards fireman. Yeah. Another buddy wanted to be a hospital. Right. So, you know, I, I, I guess, well, he's a, actually a hospital now. So I'm 
but I think he wanted to be a doctor. So right, right. they asked me, what do you want to be? And I said, I want to be on TV making people laugh. And, mm. um, you know, I got the whole, well, what do you really want to be? Because that's not a, um, a, a real mm. job and, you know, that kind of thing. So you need to find something else. And I know that's what I want to do. So to my, uh, to my teacher, <laughs> uh, I, I did it. So yeah. that, it, it was always my childhood dream. But like a lot of people, I deferred it for something uh, more responsible and more lucrative. And I uh, worked in corporate America, uh, went through a series of changes in my personal life. And I moved to Atlanta. And uh, I wanted to work for myself. I wanted to get out of corporate America and work for me. And my two options were I wanted to start either my, I want to own my own food truck mm -hmm. or do stand up comedy because those were the two things that I had a lot of experience in being funny and I love to cook. So uh, I first examined the food truck uh, option because, you know, comedy was a daunting concept of, of actually, man, I'm going to get in yeah. front of people and make them laugh. Cause I'd always been, like you said earlier, funny around the lunch table or right, right. You know, funny in my group of friends. And it's interesting now in Atlanta, 2017 food trucks are everywhere. Yeah. When I first uh, got interested in it in 97, 98, the legislation in Atlanta wouldn't allow for a mobile food service. Mm. You had to have a brick and mortar stationary um, location to serve right. food out of. So that pushed me out of food truck. I couldn't mm. afford a, a building to open a restaurant in. And so I said, nah, I'll try comedy. And, you know, the only thing I had to own with comedy was uh, some paper and, and something to write with. And, right. And now here I am. So wow, yeah. And and so you know, this podcast is really about um, helping people live the goals. And when I say that, you know, sometimes people have goals and they're kind of this far off thing, and they push, you know, they push a bunch of stuff to the side, or they're not enjoying life, right? And right, so right. I love your your example of. I mean. It, in order to be a comedian, you kind of got to live the, you kind of have to be a comedian to be a comedian, right? <laughs> and so, it, 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 yeah, it's, it's not like Monday morning quarterback and you can't right. back and go, man, we, we should have told that joke differently. You actually have to get in the game. Yeah. Yeah. And um, your story is so familiar to a lot of people. There, there's something they really, really want to do and they don't do it. They, they defer that dream. And, um, and some people aren't as lucky as you. Um, to be able to come to the point where they, whatever, something happens and they say, I'm going to do this. Right. And, um, and so that's a beautiful place to be. And, and it, it just speaks to purpose, right? About people's purpose and passions. And I mean, if you're saying that you wanted to be on TV and make people laugh at the time, people were saying they wanted to be hospitals and fire trucks. Yeah, right. <laughs> that mean, right. you've known this for a really long time, right? <laughs> Either that is, or I was in a really slow class. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Um, and so, but, but just because you knew that way back then, just because you took that leap of faith when you did, it doesn't mean you'll stick around. And right. so I, what, what I want to find out from you is kind of when or how did you realize, like, this is, this is it. I'm cut out for this. Not only do I want to do this, but I'm, I'm going to make a career out of this. This is, I, I can do this. Um, to be honest, the deciding that I was cut out for or that I was going to do this was mm -hmm. uh, a byproduct of two things. One, I asked myself, why not me? Mm. Uh, I had seen guys and, um, you know, I had friends go, hey, man, I was watching TV last night and I saw this guy and oh, you funnier than him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you funny. Hey, Kenny, man, I saw a guy at a comedy club and, you know, in college, uh, classmates that I didn't really know that well would come up and go, man, every time I'm in class, you crack me up. You really ought to be a comedian. Mm -hmm. And when one person tells you something, two people, you take it with a grain of salt. But when groups of people mm. start to tell you the same thing, you, you want to investigate it. And I decided, why not me? Uh, these other guys have made it. Maybe I could do the same. And then once I attempted, it was just stubbornness that made me 
mm. like to stay in. You know, I'm not a quitter. So yeah. I'm, I'm really glad I didn't go into bank robbing because I'd be on the FBI's most wanted list right be, now. Or be somewhere, great at it. <laughs> right, right. Somewhere in a federal prison because I would have just kept going at it. And it was the audience that made me feel like I was on track because mm. they're the ones that, and that's the beauty about comedy. It's not like any other entertainment mediums where I make a record and my sales sort of dictate or the people, I got to take it to a club or there's a movie. I've done movies where I shoot the movie in June of one year and then in December of the next year it comes out, right. which is delayed reaction. Mm -hmm. Comedy is instant feedback. So when you throw that joke out there and they laugh, okay, that joke is working. And then people come up to me after the uh, show and go, hey, man, you're really, really good. And, you know, that that's what has kept me sustained so long. Mm, yeah. And, um, you know, that that's almost like celebrating those small successes. And you get you get that feedback right away. Right. So you get that adrenaline rush right then when you get and, people laughing. And, and it's good, but it's also a little, you know, it works the other way, too, because if it's not good, yeah, the audiences are conditioned to let you know, hey, I really don't like what you're doing. <laughs> Not in those kinds terms. So, right. Like, oh, man. So, uh, yeah, when you when you're on that stage, there is no wondering how it's going. Yeah. You know unequivocally how it's going in that moment. And, and Big Kenny, this is the perfect transition to what I wanted to go to next, which was talking about overcoming obstacles and failure. Uh -huh. And um, and so. Look, when, when I think you probably were one of the first people to tell me this, and then I heard it from many, many people. There's not a comedian um, that, that probably hasn't died on stage at some point. I mean, right. where you, I mean, like you said, it's instant feedback. Everyone in the room knows whether you are succeeding <laughs> or, you know, quote unquote, failing. It, this is not a secret. You can't write this off. And, <laughs> Everybody in the room knows whether you're killing it or you're not. And it, um, it's not one of those things where your friends can go, man, I thought you did pretty good. And you'd be willing <laughs> to believe. I'm like, no, bro. Right. He hit me with a tomato. I right. would, I would. <laughs> they can say it, but you know they're lying for you. I appreciate exactly. you being my friend, but you're lying. Yeah. Um, and so I'm, 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 I'm going to, now, now that I, I put you up on a, on a pedestal, it's time to chop you down. I'm, I'm going to ask you about, I would love to hear one of those stories from you. Um, but while you're thinking of, of which one you want to share, or if there's only one, the one you want to share. Um, I remember um, just my experience. I was at a uh, open mic night, <laughs> and um, by this point, I was uh, with with this group of promoters. I mean, they were more than happy to have me on. I kind of had a reputation with them that I would at least do okay. You, you, you right. know what I mean? And um, and man, I promise you, uh, <laughs> it was like. You could have heard a pin drop. Now, the good thing is they didn't start booing or cussing me out, right? Nobody told me to kill myself or any of that. Right, stuff. right. But it was dead silence the whole time. And, I mean, those two or three seconds when you're waiting for the laugh that you know you always get for this joke. Right. And it's dead silence. felt like hours. And I remember getting off stage and um, <laughs> and how funny it was to me because I walked back to the bar. I'm kind of, you know, a little bit dejected like oh man well i guess it, it finally happened that, that, right that sucked this doesn't feel good and one of the waitresses was like man you were really funny and i'm sitting there thinking like well laugh <laughs> <laughs> i need you to laugh <laughs> i wasn't i wasn't that funny <laughs> right right you didn't laugh <laughs> i couldn't have been so fun I, I, you were really funny but in a silent kind of way right the type of way that makes everyone want to be quiet <laughs> right so um, I guess she was trying to make me feel good, but man, that that was um, that that was rough. That was torture, and and I didn't even go in there thinking I was great, and 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 I didn't have very far to fall, but it hurt. It hurt. Right, right. Um, um, so I'd, I'd love to hear one of your one of your stories of um, having to kind of overcome that that dying on stage. Uh, well, I remember when I first being realistic about comedy was something that I think helped me survive moments like that. First of all, I realized that this is a career, especially if you're going to uh, take it on as a career. Yeah. Where there are way more no's than there are yeses. It's a mm. series of sifting through and surviving the no's until you get to a yes. So uh, I started my comedy career uh, 
the world famous Uptown Comedy Corner in Atlanta, where the process is if you don't like the comedian, you boo them. Right. So being <clears throat> booed was something that I had heard before in my amateur life, but the biggest experience for me was being in New York. Now, I was one of those people that they call uh, a, a fast riser. Mm -hmm. I started comedy doing open mic and nine months later, I was filming my first television appearance. Wow. So that was what they called almost an overnight accomplishment. And mm -hmm. I, I was feeling myself uh, traveling the country. Uh, I got a mentor named Barbara Carlisle. She's been in the business uh, nearly twice as long as I have mm -hmm. twice the, uh, the credits and all of that. And I found myself uh, traveling with her as her official opener. We were in New York. Uh, it was my turn to go up at a place called uh, Manhattan Proper in Queens. Don't ask me why it's called Manhattan <laughs> Proper, but uh -huh. it's New York. And I get on stage and the room is packed with, you know, people are laughing. It's going really well. And I got up and I was doing so horrible that in this room of about 300 50 to 400 wow. people in a room that should seat maybe 180. You got That's about packed. 300 people in there. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It was so quiet, you could hear the clock tick on the wall. Oh. And a guy from way in the back of the room <laughs> looks at the host and in a conversational tone goes, man, why don't you get him off stage? And it was like he was screaming it. It was that quiet. Yeah. He just said, man, why don't you get him off stage? And nobody booed. The, the, the most horrifying sound for a comedian is silence. Boo me. Give me a chance to get out of it. Uh, say something. But to just sit there in silence and look at me, I was despondent. Yeah. I did not know what to do. <clears throat> I didn't know how to recover. And my mentor had hyped me up to the host. And, you know, everyone had knew me as a as a funny guy. So it was like, wait a minute, maybe, uh, you know, maybe Superman isn't Superman. And um, I had to go back and redeem myself a few months later. But that was, in to this day, 20 years in the business, the single solitary worst performance I've ever had. Oh, man, it sounds yeah. like it was packed. <laughs> oh, I'm saying so packed that, you know, it's excuse me, excuse me, excuse, yeah. me, excuse me. All the talent had to stand up. That's how many people were there. Wow, wow, and wow. just for them to, in a conversational tone, say, go get him. And you could hear it like he had a megaphone. <laughs> I was like, I, I, might, I might need to go back to corporate America. Yeah, and, but but Kenny, that, so many themes in what you just said that apply to, to comedy, corporate America, life in general, right? I mean, you right. talked about the fact that, hey, this is a career. Like, I I'm treating this like a career, and there are going to be more no's than yeses, right? right. I, I remember when I came out of law school, um, I sent out a bunch of, of resumes and cover letters for my first internship. And I remember saying, I don't care how many no's I get. If I get one yes, I got a job for the summer. Right. And, and um, it's, it's that focus and tenacity um, that allows you to kind of keep pushing. And, and it's great to hear how you apply that to a field that just, I mean, crushes people. I could see a lot of other people taking that experience and walking away from it. And, you know, even with the fast ride, just saying I must not be cut out for it. And so it speaks to, um, like you said, your stubbornness and determination. Well, and one thing about entertainment, uh, not just comedy, but the entertainment acting and uh, that type of thing is it's not governed by the same set of rules corporate America is. Mm -hmm. So if I don't want to hire you, I have to just say that right now we don't have anything for you mm -hmm. and we appreciate your submitting and maybe try again. But in entertainment, they can say, man, you are really not what we're looking for. You're far too fat. You were so unfunny. And I've been searching you on social media and nobody really likes you. So uh, I don't even know why you showed up. And, you know, so some of your nose are hard nose. Yeah. <laughs> you can't leave there with that sugar coat. Like, well, you know. Right, right. Well, well, maybe it's just they don't have a position. It's, yeah, yeah you'll never work here. So, yeah, uh, it, it, you, you have to have a thick skin. But uh, life is mm. a uh, is just like comedy. Comedy is so much, you know, it, it's almost like the perfect example of what comedy is like because 
in life, we always don't succeed in what we attempt to do, even when we're prepared. Right. Uh, we could be determined. Mm -hmm. We could be driven and stubborn, and it still doesn't work out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, you just keep pushing until it does or un uh, until it, you know, uh, until the clock runs out. Right, right. And, and the other thing I did want to point out to your friends and family about his story was that he talked about a few months later going back and and and, and redeeming himself, right? And, oh, I, I, had <laughs> I had to. And that and that's part of that story of overcoming the obstacle, right? For you, it right. was important that you go back to that same stage and and defeat, win that match, right? Right, right, right. But because you, had I not, that would still be my Achilles heel. Mm. I would panic every time I go to not just that club, but to New York. Period. Right. I would panic. And so I had to go back and shake that off and, uh, as they say, um, exercise that demon. Mm. From that club. Yeah. 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 So, so Candy, we, we're, we're kind of at the midpoint. We're starting to wind down a little bit All right. before we get to something that I do on every show called the hot seat scenario. Um, I want to get a little bit more into what's going on for you in the future down the road. So what, what big goals do you have now? What are you working on now? Or wh whether it's a big goal or, or the most immediate goal, what, what are you focused on now? Uh, right now I'm uh, the co-host of a radio show called the sports jock show AM 1100. You can catch us on iHeartRadio. You can catch us at the sports joc.com or at Spreaker, uh, many different platforms. We're on 8 AM to noon. Uh, Eastern Standard Time every morning. It's sports and entertainment. Uh, we're syndicated right now in several markets, mm. but my goal is to help brand this show into a national and international success. Yes. Uh, I uh, co-host the show with uh, NFL uh, retiree Wayne Gandy. He was an offensive lineman for 15 years in the NFL. And so that is one of my primary endeavors that I, that's every day, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, I've started developing um, content for television. My two projects that I'm pushing right now are animated projects and I don't mention the name of them or really talk a lot about it because I hadn't gotten a deal for it yet. Right. And I've had the unfortunate experience in this business of mentioning a project to someone that is now in its fifth season on a network wow. that I never got, you know. It sounded so good that they used it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded so good that they used it, but that was another tough lesson of learning about this business is mm. you would imagine there would be integrity at the highest levels, but I think it kind of gets even more cutthroat the higher up you go because it's a feast or famine then, you know what I mean? Yes. Uh, not producing could mean that you never get another shot with this network or as an executive. So uh, I'm doing that. Um, my, my biggest, um, responsibility, my biggest, uh, what I'm dedicated to most is I'm a father. Uh, I have a son that just graduated from James Madison University last May 2016 with a degree Congrats. in biology. And I've got a 12 year old daughter who's, uh, a member of the National Honor Society. So first and foremost, I want to help raise solid citizens. Mm. And then I try and squeeze comedy in. With that, I, I host um, at a club called Karma Bistro mm -hmm. on Saturdays in Atlanta. It's in Stone Mountain, Georgia, and it's not comedy. I'm just the hype guy. You know, I keep the party moving. So I MC. I'm developing projects, man, and uh, doing radio and just trying to um, produce the best content I can because Laughter is really, really important to me. I didn't know exactly how helpful it was to people's lives mm -hmm. until they started sharing with me yeah. what some of the things that I was doing uh, did for them. So yeah. it, uh, that was a, a, a lot of weight to carry, but it's a responsibility that I gladly shoulder. And I'm doing my best to just um, hopefully move the game forward. Uh, there are a lot of funny guys but there have been few that transcended the medium, like a uh, Carol Burnett, uh, a Robin Williams, a Mike Myers from Saturday Night Live. Those people, the things that they, a, a Seth Rogen, uh, not Seth Rogen, a Seth MacFarlane from Family Guy. The, 
the way he produces and acts and directs and does the, his own voiceovers. That is the type of talent that I've um, tried to train myself to be. Right. And that is what I'm trying to display right now. Yeah. And Kenny, I, I, I know you'll get there. Um, I'm sure you know in entertainment, you know, it, it, uh, for many, many people, it, it takes decades, many years to become an overnight success. Very much so. <laughs> very much. You see the guy that's the overnight success and you go, man, how long you been doing this? He says, 35 years. <laughs> yeah. so, wow. so I'm looking forward to you being an overnight success to the people that don't know you yet. And, exactly. Um, Me too, man. <laughs> Me too. Uh, so, so we we got to wind down. We're, we're going to hit the okay. hot seat scenario and then do a couple wrap up things. I I actually do a pretty consistent hot seat scenario, but I created a, a special one just for you. All right, so all right. here we go. You're going to have to choose between person A or person B, okay. and um, I, as you kind of mentioned, you're a comedy instructor, and I'm going to make you choose which one of these two people you want as your student, and then just a couple of quick things you're going to tell them to get them headed in the right direction, okay? So okay. you're the instructor and person A, um, and neither one of these people have ever done stand-up before, so this will be their debut. So person A is somebody who is a really shy person, afraid of public speaking, um, does not want to be on stage, but has some of the funniest, sharpest comedic writing that you've seen in a long time. And then right. person B, is somebody who just has that personality. I mean, outgoing, really big personality, loves being the center of attention, would jump on stage in a minute, but has absolutely zero sense of what is actually funny and what isn't funny. So out of these two students, uh, which one are you going to make the teacher's pet? And, and what, are you, what are a couple things you're going to tell them to do to, to kind of get them steered towards the right direction? Uh, it, it's interesting, man. I actually had a real life scenario like that. There's a young okay. lady named uh, Dulce Sloan uh, uh -huh. doing really well now. She's been on Late Night with Craig Ferguson. She's done some things for the NFL, Fox Sunday. Uh, she's been on the Steve Harvey show where she actually uh, mentioned me. Uh, so you're trying to say it was me and not your, your teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're trying to point out right now? No, no, man. I'm, uh, just, I'm messing with you. But she... She was a very funny, very intelligent, great observation. She could take things and make them funny, but she was just terrified of being in front of people. Now, when I was in the Marines, we used to go to the rifle range because we all have to qualify as, you know, Marine Corps riflemen are the best in the world. So we had to go and learn that. And they would always say the best student is the guy who had never touched a rifle before because he hadn't developed any bad habits. Mm. Outgoing guy the quote unquote class clown, that type of person, yeah. sees themselves as someone who's already successful. Right. The person who's afraid is more likely to take it serious and pay attention because they're trying to avoid what they see as horrifying uh, results. You, you understand? Absolutely. The, the not, the, the getting on stage terrifies me so I want to survive this moment. So what do I have to do? Okay, it's first secure my uh, oxygen mask, then put on my <laughs> flotation device. It's right. that kind of thing. So uh, I would rather have the person that doesn't think they're capable mm. because once they get that small victory, they become empowered and they build on that. The person who sees themselves as already super funny, they have a bad experience and now they're blaming the rest of the world. Well, man, you know, these people don't get me or, oh, this was a whole thing. And, and so I would rather, and I would tell the person who is shy, um, look at the rest of your life. Mm. Everything you've applied yourself to up to this point, you've been successful at. Mm. And this will be no different, but you have to apply yourself. Oh, and wow. It takes dedication and repetition and overcoming the fear constantly to make progress. But yeah, that, that's the one I'd rather have. Thank you, thank you for playing along. And and really sounded like you're trying to take my job. You started getting into into the motive. I started getting motivated. <laughs> no, 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 man. I tr trust me. I'm barely holding on with the, with, with the stuff I got. I don't need anything else on my plate. And oh, you are doing a fantastic job, man. I wanted to say that. Uh, <laughs> 
what you're doing uh, surprised me because uh, not that you're doing what you're doing. It's just that you're doing it as quickly as you are. Um, you know, not a, not a lot of people get that get there. So in, in such a, a a rapid succession uh, of action. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I will um, go ahead and void out that check you send me and just consider that my payment <laughs> back to you. Um, so, you know, j just before we kind of wrap up here, I'm going to ask you to give just a, a motivational quote or mantra, something you use um, to, to give yourself a little extra oomph when you need it. And, and then after you do that, give us some contact information um, to, so that people can, can find out more about you, about your shows, uh, anything you want folks to, to know about you. Um, before I say that, though, man, I, I, I just want to thank you again, um, not only for being on the show, but, man, you, you, you really did um, kind of take me under your wing for that, for that little bit of time I was doing comedy. And, and um, just like you sounded right now where you, where you told that young lady who now sounds like she is, is, is wildly successful, um, you kind of did the same with me. And, and I appreciate that. The, the people that, that listen to the podcast know a lot more about my story. So what they don't know is my interaction with you came at a pretty rocky time when, um, when, when it meant a lot to me to be able to get on stage and hear people laugh. Right. I mean, yeah, that was one of the yeah. things that got me to be able to laugh again. So. So, again, man, just wanted to say that this is th this was a really special interview for me. I've been looking forward to it for a long time. And, you, and, <laughs> um, and so let's go ahead and, 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 and let's let's start wrapping up here. I would love for you to leave us with that quote or mantra that you use and then give us that contact information. Um, well, the mantra, like I said earlier, man, is why not me? Uh, the world is full of successful people who have accomplished uh, all of the goals they set out for themselves and more. You know, I saw a story about a guy who played in the NFL. And now he's a neurosurgeon, another um, uh, offensive lineman for the Baltimore uh, Ravens is getting his Ph.D. in applied mathematics. So you can do whatever it is you set your mind out to do. Mm -hmm. And when we see successful people, they're human flesh and blood who apply themselves people just like we can do the same thing. So, um, you know, when things are going tough for me, I always ask myself, why not me? And then I remind myself, there are people praying for my results. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got booed off stage, but there's a guy who's suffering from stage fright that won't even step on stage. So I, right. I'm at least ahead of him and uh, progress is progress. No matter how it's measured, it's still progress. And yeah. Uh, if you want to get in contact with me, I am on social media, um, on Instagram at the Big Kenny. It's uh, T H E Big K E N N E Y, and that'll take you. Or you can uh, search social media for hashtag Most Misspelled Comic. A lot <laughs> of people never put the E before the Y. Or um, um, yeah, Most Misspelled Comic, I would say, or Poppy Guapo. You could search that hashtag. <laughs> Um, but yeah, man, just, just look me up, uh, or listen to the sports jock show every morning, eight to 12, uh, AM 1100 right here in Atlanta. Thank you, Kenny. Um, friends and family, you, as man. you know, um, I'll have links to, to his social media. I have links to his, where you can find them on the show notes page. Just go to my podcast page, live the goals.com and search for Kenny with the, with two E's K E N N E Y. And, um, his show notes page will pop right up as well as links to all the stuff we talked about here today. And then friends and family, I'm trying to figure out how to do this now since I'm doing it by video. I got to put the little sponsor plug in here now. As you know, um, this show is brought to you by Audible and you can get a free month subscription to Audible as well as a free book if you just go to livethegoals.com forward slash Audible and try it out, see if you like it. Um, you're listening to podcasts, so I know you like listening to audio while you're driving, walking, working out. And it, I, I found it to be great. So, friends and family, I appreciate you listening. Kenny, thank you again. Had a great time, man. Continued success, Dale. I'm really proud of all the uh, success, man. Uh, you make me feel like I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> all right. Y'all have a good one. All right. Thanks for checking out the show today and make sure to click subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. We hope you take away something that helps fill your life with purpose and laughter and make sure you head over to livethegoals.com for more info on guests and resources. Remember to set and reach goals that lead you to a life of purpose and passion.